out here at One Big Jam shooting today. Hold up. That's me in that grainy video with nothing but a Sony a6500 and a Sigma 30mm f1.4. I don't know where I got the confidence to cover an entire live event with just one prime lens. Oh, the audacity. Let's go. The Sigma Trio's middle child has got to be one of the most versatile focal lenses. The 30mm with the crop factor makes this lens a 45mm, which is a sexy, sexy mid-range. This lens is currently being sold for $329 Canadian on Amazon, compared to its counterpart, $515 for the 56mm and $484 for the 16mm. So yeah, it's the lowest price prime lens out of the three and the quality you get is crazy. The Sigma 30mm f1.4 released in 2016 is still one of the best prime lens for video. And here are three reasons why. Mid-range equals versatility. The 45 millimeter equivalent can get you close to your subject and get a really nice compressed look. And you don't even have to step too far back to get a wide looking shot. When I was shooting this event, I had enough distance between me and the performers so they could still freely do their thing but the footage still looked up close and personal. The footage comes out looking very flattering to my subject's features. Sharpness and colors. This lens is sharp from corner to corner even at the widest of 1.4. While shooting this event, I was not expecting the footage to come out so clearly as it is a darker than normal venue. I was able to get minimal grain, beautiful colors that pop just like this performer's hair. One thing that contributes to the sharpness aspect though is the autofocus. I hardly experienced any focus breathing and barely had troubles focusing on what I intended. There is a manual focus that I could override if need be. I guess autofocus is a bonus point. Now before I get to the last point, be sure to subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video. Low light beast. This goes without saying that there are other Sigma Prime lens that offer this wide aperture of 1.4. But with the combination of the other two reasons I've listed, I'm confident this is the best choice for all your low light shoots, especially when your shoots has many uncontrollable variables. The bokeh comes out very creamy and smooth. I was able to make everything look professional and cinematic, keeping the aperture at 1.4 the entire time. Here are a few things you should be aware of before adding this lens into your workflow. There's no built-in stabilization, so make sure you stabilize using other methods. And also, you need to make sure you update the firmware in the lens to maximize its usage. Now, from a perspective of a videographer, there are a few situations where I can see this lens as your best choice. Anything that's run and gun, such as weddings, live performance, nighttime street shoots, documentaries, pretty much any scenario where you don't have the time or space to set up any lights and everything is always on the go. You can keep your setup lightweight, and since it's a 30 millimeter, you can get a bit closer to your subject to get better audio if you're using a shotgun mic. Ultimately, I chose this lens to shoot this event as I value the wide aperture so much. It's just not something you can replicate with any E-mount zoom lens at the moment.